Welcome to the latest episode of Five on the Floor on the Five Reasons Sports Network. Thanks for joining us on your favorite podcast app, Apple, Apple Podcasts, Android. We recommend that you use Spotify or the Five Reasons YouTube channel. Also, check out Off the Floor. That's where the conversation goes all day long. Get off of Twitter. You don't want to see the tweets from the same five people every single day. We've got more than 500 people in this community. It is a community. You also get to communicate with us as well, even tag us. So I'd rather some of these people don't do it at 3 in the morning, but it's okay. Check it out. Link to our Discord, again, called Off the Floor, is right here in the description on the podcast feed the YouTube channel, and pinned to the top of the Five Reasons Twitter page. Also, check out the great sponsors of the Five Reasons Sports Network. If you need any metal work done, aluminum fences, gates, pergolas, railings, and more, reach out to our friends at Big Brother Ironwork. Abraham, Daniel, their whole team will take care of you. Again, it's bigbrotherironwork.com. They will offer free estimates across Florida, including Dade County, Broward, the Keys, and other areas. Their pricing is competitive, and they guarantee steadfast fabrication and installation. As we always mention, like all of our sponsors, avid Miami Heat fans, so have Heat fans take care of all this work for you. Licensed and insured, again, bigbrotherironwork.com. Reach out to our friend Abraham at 786-406-5780. Again, that's Abraham at 786-406-5780, bigbrotherironwork.com. And now, today's episode. Down to Biscay. Yay. Uh. Five on the floor, ride for my dogs. Where here's the thing, you can check the score. Hustle hard, couple scars, ran bubble frogs. Just like Buck the say, you in trouble, y'all. Kept the floor playing, got an all band. Y'all seen the block, stop with one hand. And Pat, we trust, it's power, have the guts. We're here to bring the heat, y'all can hang it up. Welcome to Five on the Floor, a daily insider show on the Miami Heat and the NBA featuring Ethan Skolnick, Greg Sylvander, and Alex Toledo, plus others from the Five Reasons Sports Network. All right, welcome back to Five on the Floor. Here's today's floor plan. I'm Ethan Skolnick. You can follow me at Ethan J. Skolnick and at Five Reasons Sports. we got Greg Sylvander. You can follow him at Greg Sylvander. So we've been watching the NBA playoffs, and there is a huge surprise. The Dallas Mavericks are up 2-0 in their series and on the verge of going to the NBA Finals. They're doing this even though last year they basically tanked their way out of everything at the end. They were not even trying to win games at the end of the year. After they acquired Kyrie, they were sitting people. They were not projected to be in the top four this year, even with Luka. They uh, had stretches of the season this year where it didn't look great. They made a couple of additions at the trade deadline. Daniel Gafford, P.J. Washington, key additions, not stars, but they added them to their stars, something we've talked about before. But the big thing that they did that got them there is the Kyrie Irving acquisition. And so we're going to talk about this in the context of the Heat, not that any of us were calling for the Heat to get Kyrie at the time. I think both of us were not on board with that. We knew that obviously the Heat would have some issues with it considering you know, some of the things that had gone on with Kyrie, not just the vaccination stuff, but also, uh, you know, him tweeting out the Amazon link and everything that went along with that, that it just did not seem like a good fit, even though he was a Duke guy. And even though I know that at the beginning of his career, uh, the Heat had a lot of uh, affection for him, let's just say. There, there was as, as a basketball player. Um, but it's worked. I mean, I, there's no way around this. They're, they're two games away from the finals. Uh, and Again, coming out of one of the toughest conferences in recent memory, like the fact that the Dallas Mavericks may be there is remarkable. And so, Greg, I'm going to say this, okay? This is an organization in the Miami Heat that has made good use of depressed assets in the past. They anchored uh, their teams in the late 90s with a guy in Tim Hardaway who had slipped to third string in Golden State. People talk about, you know, Hall of Fame Timmy now. That was not the case at the time, okay? He had knee injuries. He'd fallen out of favor there. He was playing behind B.J. Armstrong, not even like Chicago B.J. Armstrong, but post-Chicago B.J. Armstrong. He came to Miami, and he totally redid his entire game. In fact, there were issues, you know, they were talking about the issues between him and, and Sprewell in Golden State. So there were some questions about that stuff as well. He comes to Miami, and he and Alonzo Mourning, again, were the anchors of some very good teams that did not make it to the finals, but again, very good teams. And, of course, now Tim is in the Hall of Fame. Uh, Jamal Mashburn was another guy um, who I people remember him passing on the shot, right, to Clarence Weatherspoon. But also, he did some pretty good things in Miami uh, as their third guy, and he was a guy who was a depressed asset to a degree, even though he was a top-five pick. 
because of some of the issues with Jimmy Jackson and Jason Kidd when the three of them were together in Dallas. Miami's done this kind of thing before. They've gone after the disgruntled stars. We talk about Shaq, obviously, Braun to a certain degree, Bosch, uh, Dragic even was disgruntled at the time. But also they've gone after guys who maybe were not thought of to be at the level they were before. They haven't done it lately, though. So should they start looking at this again? There's a couple things here. I think the Dallas Mavericks, just as we start with the Kyrie conversation, it's less to do about Kyrie and more about, I think Dallas is a really good formula for what you can do around the margins of your two anchors and completely revamp a team and get to a conference finals. And, uh, you know, they're basically looking at, at becoming a finals team. They would look, they didn't even make the playoffs last year, right? And, and then Derek Lively is uh, how they eventually get, you know, their draft taken care of. That's an interesting group there, what they built. I think that the Heat should definitely take notes on kind of what was done around a duo that seemed like they didn't fit last year. Uh, and the Heat have their two anchors. So when, when we're talking about depressed assets, they don't need to go and find necessarily an anchor that's a depressed asset. But if you're talking about players around the league, I do think that this is one way that they can maximize the spending power they do have in trades um, with the assets that they do have. Because we talk about that they, they can be outbid by a lot of other teams. Well, I think looking at some of these guys that we'll talk about here in a minute are guys that maybe they could buy low on just from a value perspective. So that that is something that I think that they should look at. It's going to be a very situation uh, by situation kind of scenario with these different guys, but it's time to do that. Dallas did it and it worked. And I think that in this, in today's NBA, if you can get a leg up uh, via trade on a guy uh, who can play then, you know, above his contract or to his contract again, uh, that's what you want to do with maybe other guys on your roster that are not currently. Well, the key difference here, you can talk about building around the two anchors, but the key difference I think that should be noted is that the two anchors on Dallas are elite scorers. True. Okay. I mean, the lead anchor is the elite scorer right now. And the second guy is, again, for whatever you think of him personally or whatever, and, uh, you know, I, I had my own interactions with him when I covered Cleveland for that one year, and – you know, again, he's he's a, he's been a difficult teammate at times. It's not just with the media. He's been a difficult teammate. There's been a whole bunch of stuff behind the scenes, but but he can score. I mean, he's a bucket getter. We know that. Um, he's done it at the highest possible level. Um, he did it to win a finals. And so, I, I guess the question becomes this: It is easier. Neither Jimmy Butler nor Bam Adebayo is an elite bucket getter. Okay, Correct. Jimmy. Jimmy has morphed into that at times in the postseason. We don't know if he can still do that, but they're not scoring does not come easily to the two of them. The way that it, it comes to Luca and Kyrie, they're two of the five most gifted scorers in the league, really just on pure scoring ability. It is probably easier to find compliments to that than it is to find compliments to Jimmy and Bam, right? Like I, because, right. Because the, the, the thing is you're, you know, we, we talked about T Tyler being that compliment, right? But again, when you're dealing with scoring compliments, they can be who are not elite to the level of, say, Luca and Kyrie, they can be taken out uh, in certain ways and, and rendered less effective, less efficient, and all that. And of course, some of it is availability issues with Tyler also. But see, th see that that's the thing is that the Heat have had to build this thing in an unconventional way. Because their two best players are really grit and defense guys first. And, and so, uh, you know, they, they do the other stuff. And then, again, Jimmy has elevated at, you know, at times at, to a really high level. And Bam has shown the ability to do some of it. But, again, they're never going to be in the class of Luka and, and Kyrie scores. And so adding a Gafford, adding a P.J. Washington, like if you added those players to Jimmy and Bam, that doesn't help you that much. I mean, it helps it, – like Gafford would help – Bam, just have some more size there and all the rest of that and another finisher, but they probably get in each other's way. Uh, P.J. Washington makes more sense. We talked about him at the trade deadline, and I guess I guess with the Rozier trade, maybe you could have targeted P.J. Washington instead. I, again, I, I think Heat officials would say that 
wasn't really available to them in that way. And they needed the point guard more and they were moving Kyle and all the rest of it. But, but I think that is, when we talk about roster construction, that is one of the struggles of this particular group is that you're building around two guys that aren't that easy to build around. And I, it, that's Very just, true. That's, right. It's just the way it is. And, and so I, I think that uh, that's something that should be considered. But on the other, other side of this, I do want to get into some guys who might, if you're going to keep the cup to two, who might you be able to be acquired and and give you some of what you kind of wanted from Tyler, I think, uh, and may if he's still here, still want, or maybe from Rozier. But I, but that's to to me, that's kind of where this this thing this discussion has to go. Is okay. What is the who's the Tim Hardaway? Like like let's let's just who's the Tim Hardaway? Like who's the guy out there who's been relegated, but it's because of coaching. It's because of the rest of the roster. It's just because of situation. It's because maybe he's bored. I mean, who is the guy that you're gonna you're gonna do that with? Because again, the Donovan Mitchell thing, we're gonna we'll probably do 35 more podcasts until he signs the extension. But it does appear at this point that he's probably gonna sign the extension. All right. Speaking of extending your uh, your options in terms of how you get heat content, check out Autograph. This is a new app, and this is where real fans get unreal rewards. Use the code five. Make sure you sign up for that. That unlocks everything for you. And then you can sign up and check out the Heat. You can check out the Dolphins. You can check out the other Miami teams. Uh, we know some of your Heat fans. We root for other football teams, other hockey teams, etc. Outside of South Florida, check it out. It's the Autograph app. You can find it at Autograph.io or at Autograph on the App Store or the Google Play Store. Use the code five. Here's just one example. Okay, and there's still time for this. This is not expiring until I think the afternoon of the 31st. They put a Bam Adebayo signed jersey framed on there roughly a five hundred dollar value if you accumulate enough coins on there and that they have they will explain to you how to do this on the app it's very simple you will become eligible to win it for 13 bucks okay so we're talking about 500 down to 13 that's the kind of thing they offer there as well as tickets and more so check it out it's the autograph app app go to autograph.io we're putting out this podcast on the 25th so you got six days to get on there until they're going to be giving this thing away so make sure that you sign up now at autograph. All right. Uh, also, I do want to mention prize picks because people have asked me. It's back in the state of Florida. Use the code five F I V E. Play the lineups on there. I can tell you, it's going a lot better for me than it did previously. Um, the game is almost the same as it was before. Okay. The only difference is you can't go up to six players. You can't do flex plays. Everything else is is basically the same now. They got the tacos. They've got uh, on Tuesdays. They've got the uh, they got the goblins. They got the demons. It's all there. So just go check it out. Use the code five. Sign up. It is, again, legal in the state of Florida. All right, so let's look at some of these guys. Now, we, we did a whole episode on Trey. I believe I he's one of them. Alex. Right? I mean, that's he's now he's not a depressed asset like Hardaway was. He's, he's still like an all-star level player. Um, he is. And he would cost a lot. He would cost a lot. And he's depressed because I think of team sort of lack of overall success fit problems, which is something we talked about with some heat players too. Um, and the other guy who may be depressed in that in a way is his backcourt mate, which is DeJounte Murray, um, who, you know, the heat could have gone more harder after they went after Rozier, who likely cost them less than Murray did the time. But those are two guys. I'll throw all these out in a pot here. And then you, you kind of get into it. Brandon Ingram's another one. Um, seems CJ to be McCollum. depressed. TJ, T, T, right? Uh, CJ McCollum, a couple of guys in, in New Orleans. Now, CJ, they've had him playing out of position for the past couple of years. He's not been a good playoff performer the last couple of years, uh, times he's been out there either, uh, which is odd because earlier in his career, he was pretty good, actually. He had some moments for Portland. Both of those guys, though, the problem with Ingram is uh, what you're going to have to pay him. And, and I think that's a big reason why he's a depressed asset. But also, it does seem like he and Willie Green did not really connect. He wasn't playing fourth quarters of playoff games, even with Zion hurt. Um, so that's, again, depressed asset, but not depressed financially, uh, which is part of the issue here. Zach Levine is another one we've talked about a lot. I don't like the fit with him. I've said that over and over. No, thank you. But they got better when he went out. I just, you know, but again, Andrew Wiggins in Golden State. Um, glue he, Number one pick to glue guy. OK, he was a glue guy on a championship team, but it does seem like whatever the personal issues he's been dealing with in recent years and other things, he's not been the same since that championship. Um, I don't know. I, I don't know where you'd be with him. And then a couple a couple of others here. 
uh, to mention. I'm not going to call anybody in in uh, Phoenix a depressed asset. Uh, Brad, they're not going after Bradley Beal now when they didn't before. KD is not a depressed asset. He's still a an elite player um, that you'd be going after. Uh, is there anybody else that kind of jumps to mind? I mean, Laurie Markin is not a depressed asset. No. Laurie Mars, right? So um, Jeremy Grant who, who, maybe could be in that category just because of where he is yeah. in, his, in his career compared to where his, that franchise is. You know what Do I you mean? Do you know he hasn't played a game in April and I think in four seasons? Are you aware wow. of that? I saw that stat. Like he's shut down for one reason or another. I mean, it's, a lot of it is circumstantial. Um, he's paid a lot. He'd be a great fitness to pay him. Um, but yes, Jeremy Grant is another one. Um, I'm trying to think of teams that went deep into the playoffs. Denver doesn't really have one. Uh, Michael Porter Jr. is not a depressed asset. They may need to trade him to rebalance the roster a little bit and get some backcourt scoring, and he he could be moved. I don't think KCP is going to be available. But again, uh, you, you look at teams that are out there that maybe are in contending type spaces. Is there anybody on the Clippers to you that would qualify as that? Paul George is going to be a free agent. So I, I don't yeah, know. Yeah. I mean, I guess in a really big swing, you could say Kawhi Leonard is a depressed asset mm. um, to some degree, but I mean, that, then we're talking a mega trade, you know what I mean? And right. I don't know that they're ready to go that direction. So, uh, and then the rest of that roster doesn't really fit the, the, the bill to me. So it, it gets more limited. Um, Let's see what happens with Minnesota here against Dallas. Yeah. You know, we're, as we talk about Dallas, if Minnesota goes out, what changes do they need to make? Although I do not think Miami would ever be interested in Carl Anthony Towns. He may no. be a player that eventually would get moved. Um, and just you want as many deck chairs on as many of these um, ships to be moving. And then you need to just be able to get involved in pounce, right? And and that, so that's what I think you hope for. These are the types of players that I think Heat fans should be thinking about when they talk trades. Um, but it's it, all of them come with their fair sit, set of question marks and challenges, and not all are clean deals necessarily. Mm -hmm. So we've kind of we've definitely identified a group of players that fit that bill, but there could be guys we're not even thinking about yet that become um maybe not depressed assets, but players that don't fit in their situations anymore. And then the heat can get involved there. So there are, there are other options out there. I think of everyone that we just mentioned, uh, I like DeJounte Murray. I, mm -hmm. I think that that's interesting. And I do like Brandon Ingram. I don't know what the cost would be there, but yeah. that is the kind of trade where you're taking on a really talented player that does have some question marks, but the heat have done that before. Yeah, but again, uh, you know, one of the problems there is that they don't want to give him the full max, and I can't imagine Miami would want to either. Uh, so, uh, but uh, there may not be anybody who does. I I'll mention one other just because his name is out there again, and the one of the depressed assets that worked out the best for a team, another team that's still in there, even though this guy has been hurt, is Kristaps Porzingis. And now you look at Washington potentially moving Kyle Kuzma. And you say, okay, well, you could get some scoring punch there. Kuz comes with some baggage himself, I think. I don't know necessarily that Kuz is the most winning player out there, although they did win a championship with the Lakers with him as probably the third best player, third or fourth best player, him and KCP probably on that team behind LeBron and uh, NAD in the bubble. So I, he's another one that potentially you could look at. Um I, you know, then there's also like the recent high picks and, you know, th there are some guys that just are just not, you can't help like a Marvin Bagley, right? Like people were talking about Marvin Bagley, number two overall pick, one of the great blunders in draft history. I'm surprised that Moore is not said about that. I mean, literally went right before Luca and Trey, Awful. right? Uh, and Sacramento has had a bunch of those over the years, by the way. But again, another team took a shot at him and, Detroit didn't even have any use for him. Then he ended up in Washington. I, so I, there are some of those guys, like a Wiseman type. Then you're talking about more, not not sort of stars with baggage or in bad situations, but you're talking more about reclamation projects. And yeah. their results with reclamation projects have not been great because typically results with reclamation projects are not great. I mean, the, the Greg Oden experiment, the Eddie Curry experiment, um, typically when they brought on these type of guys, it just, it, you know, you start 
whether because of injuries or you know, sort of the residual effects of previous injuries or attitude or whatever, it just doesn't end up end up working. Um, so you that, know, that, 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 Mar Marcus know Smart works. is another guy that that we should probably monitor, right? That's an interesting. I, I think the Memphis situation is just interesting in general because mm -hmm. they're expecting to go from like zero back to sixty quickly next year in a loaded conference, right? But would you see what Gigi Jackson did this year and you get Morant back for a full season, you're kind of like, okay, wait, there are pieces there. Um, I mean, that was a team that was as high as a two seed the previous year. So, yeah, I mean, I think a Marcus Smart is somebody that could be interesting to Miami. I don't think he's a lead guard anymore. I don't think he's a starting guard, but maybe as your third guard, um, you could do worse. I mean, shoot, there's guys like Gabe Vincent out there. That would be a reclamation project, right, after what went on this past year. I don't think they would bring him back right now. I expect to see Gabe back in Miami before his career ends, probably as a minimum guy. Uh, but th th those are some names, too. And, again, I know those names are not going to excite people. That's not the third star. But I, I do think that you have to look at some of these players and say, okay, you're not going to find a Kyrie necessarily. But if you have a guy who's got raw talent and in just in a bad situation um, – you know, I I mean, and then there's the minimums. We're going to talk about more, but, like, can they get Kelly Oubre production out of somebody next year? That's somebody who probably would have been in Miami if Dame had come. So I, I, I think we'll start to make our list a little bit more, but I think what we wanted to do in this episode is sort of more talk about the mindset of this. Nobody really would have looked at what Dallas was doing and said, okay, they're turning that into a finals team. I mean, most people don't even like the coach there, okay? So I think most people would be like, okay, all right, you're getting Kyrie, you're taking a flyer. They let Brunson go, yep. okay, <laughs> right? They didn't resign. I mean, they didn't do the smartest things uh, uh, along the way here, and they've kind of, they've got. But but what's crazy is Luca and Kyrie seem to connect, and I I don't know that people would have thought that, particularly with Kyrie's sort of issues connecting with others, and uh, frankly, Luca's issues connecting with others, and the ball dominance of both of them just on the court. And they just put they put guys around them that are just like okay, it's just going to be the two of you, okay? And yeah, they've got they've got a they've got a trigger happy you know guard and Tim Hardaway Jr. too. But like I'm saying, like they just basically said, you do your thing, we'll take care of the other stuff. And then like Derek Jones Jr. and a Gafford and PJ Washington, we'll make the corner threes, right? We'll 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 defend, we'll rebound, okay? Gafford gave them vertical spacing. And it just is a good point that there are some things to be taken from that team, but I'll close where we started. The biggest problem the Miami Heat have is scoring the basketball. And I, I, and so it, it's, if you're going to find a depressed asset, you kind of have to take a flyer maybe on an inefficient scorer and hope you can improve his efficiency in Miami and I'm starting. And then if I keep going along this line, I'm going to start talking myself into Zach Levine, and I, I just don't want to do that. But it probably is the archetype of the type of player that you could buy low on, at least in terms of assets. Maybe not in terms of uh, salary. And you could say, okay, here, um, you know, maybe he would give you a little bit more. We can make him more efficient, or coach and get him into better position, and all the rest of that. Possibly. I like the DeJounte Murray idea better. Um, but if they're keeping if they're if they're trading Trey, they're not they're not trading DeJounte too. I wouldn't I wouldn't expect right now, unless they're planning on going totally young. So any closing thoughts? I'm with you. Um, I think that there's probably gonna be names we haven't even called on yet. And like that's part of the fact that we're doing this on May twenty fifth and there's a whole off season <laughs> ahead. Um, I just think that Heat fans should keep their eyes open and their ears open because you never know what situation turns sour all of a sudden, and there's likely to be players we didn't even mention. I mean, we didn't even get into the Draymond Greens of the world, um, you know, the Clay Thompsons of the world who is a free agent, but you, you never know how guys can get places. Um, so there's just there's a lot of names out there, but I do think that uh, the Dallas situation is just one where you could see that they went from um, – being a, a team very much like Miami that was on the fringe of the playoffs and right outside mm -hmm. of the lottery or in the back end of the lottery. And now they're almost finals bound and uh, it can happen. So you just have to make a couple right moves. And, and the big thing to take into consideration here too, is you can get a depressed asset. It can work for a little while, but sometimes it doesn't work the whole long term. 
Russ Westbrook is a guy they probably could have taken a look at in various situations here over the past couple of years. But then there's others like, uh, you know, Utah Colin Sexton was kind of a depressed asset after Cleveland traded him has become an interesting player there who fits the heat mentality. So uh, there will be more guys that we talk about uh, here as we're going forward. And, and I think that uh, again, what Dallas has done, what Boston did with Porzingis, the only thing is I want Heat fans to be honest with themselves. There were a lot of Heat fans that were on the Kyrie train, okay, at least a little bit. Uh, nobody was – I don't want to say nobody. There are a couple. But for the most part on Heat Twitter, Porzingis was not a target for most Heat fans because, again, everybody was obsessed with Dame. And I, and, and I understand – I get that. But let's not be like, oh, well, they should have pivoted. Heat fans didn't want them to pivot. They didn't want them to pivot, okay? And it, it wasn't until Rozier became – more available to them in late, late January, early, you know, whatever that was that they actually did make more of a pivot to that. So again, let, you know, let's, if you want them to go after the press assets, then maybe they shouldn't wait on the Mitchell extension, uh, you know, all the way until it actually happens. And then, you know, just like, okay, uh, you know, what happened here? And now there's nobody left to go after. So always things to consider. We'll get into more of it. Check out autograph, use the code five F I V E big brother, ironwork.com. Of course, check that out and price picks with the code F-I-V-E. We'll be back with more episodes over the weekend. Again, we will start getting the draft coverage pretty much at the start of June. So we'll have a lot of episodes related to that. Have a good one, everybody. Thank you for listening to The Five on the Floor on the Five Reasons Sports Network. After all, someone needs to listen to my dad.